Hi there, Beth. I'm happy to have you today. Hi, Jill. So today was just one of those Mondays and, um, you know, sometimes things don't go as planned or they take longer than you think they're going to, etc. So I was a little off schedule and um, rather than rushing, I just decided I would push back the Facebook Live for an hour. Um, that way I can get, take a breather and be more prepared for you. So that's the reason for the time change this afternoon. And what is today? February 6th. Um, I had a really good weekend. Um, just kind of a hodgepodge of things, work, fun stuff. Um, oh my gosh. So I was scrapbooking on Saturday evening. I decided I'll put a movie on. So Steel Magnolias, is that the name of it? The old movie, Steel Magnolias, came up a long time ago or uh, on Netflix. It's the movie from a long time ago. I mean, I'm guessing it's probably 35 years old or so. Um, seen it many times. Love it. So many great actresses in there. Um, Sally Field, Julia Roberts, um, who else? Dolly Parton, Olympia Dukakis, and I um, I can't think of the name of the last woman. Anyways, super fun, but I just cried like a baby, like sobbing. And I'm thinking to myself, Mary, you know what happens in this movie. You know, breathe. No, no, I've watched it so many times and it's still like I've seen it for the first time. So kind of one of those um, great, to me, a great classic movie. And I love the story behind it and the um, sense of friendship among the women. Um, so anyways, Sharon, welcome. Port Huron, Michigan, your first time watching. I'm so happy you're here. And I hope that you'll be coming back lots and lots more times. Um, a couple of announcements. As you know, it's very hard to predict how many products a company will sell. Um, and sometimes people wait on making purchases and they're disappointed if something is sold out. Um, for example, the Valentine Punch, which we won't get back in until um, mid-April. And um, and then the Lucky Clover Punch, which sold out prematurely. And we've been told we will not be getting any more of the Lucky Clover Punches. All right. Just so you know that. I did have a class post last week. Um, or I should say I sent it out by email to email subscribers. I had a limited number of option one Lucky Clover classes that included the stamp set and punch. Um, I only had six. They sold out in 30 minutes. I am continuing to sell option two, which is the card supplies, the um, uh, gold foil sheets, and a package of the sequins, and of course selling the uh, PDF tutorial for the Lucky Clover cards. Um, PDF tutorial is super easy to buy. You just go to my blog, stampinpeace.com. Remember, it's now WordPress, so there's no putting in type pad. Stampinpeace.com, click on shop, and at the bottom of the drop down menu, click on PDF store, and you can see all of my PDF um, tutorials for sale, including that uh, the most recent ones, which are the Ginkgo Branch cards and the Lucky Clover cards. Now, as a warning, I want to let you know that the Easter Bunny um, bundle, which if you're like me, you know it, you love it. Um, I've been playing around with this, making some fun cards. I showed a um, two baby cards I made with the Easter Bunny Punch a few weeks ago. The Easter Bunny Punch, as of five minutes ago, when I checked our um, demonstrator inventory status report, this is on low inventory. 
So it might sell out in the next hour. It might sell out later this evening. It might sell out in two days. I don't know, but it is on low inventory. It went on low inventory, I believe, um, yesterday, maybe the day before. So if you really want that Easter Bunny punch, I'm going to suggest you hurry on over to my online store and purchase it before it's gone. It will sell out if it's already on low inventory. And of course it has a great um, stamp set to coordinate with it. And I think that's it for announcements. Um, I've added several new people to my Mary Stampers team along with some of my other uh, team members. So that's exciting. I think we're up to maybe seven or eight new team members. And um, there's a few more that are in the works that I think will be joining. So that's exciting. As we know, celebration continues through the end of this month where you can get exclusive products when you shop host or join. Um, and the joining offer is so good. If you're spending anywhere of near $90 or over, please consider purchasing that um, starter kit where you get $175 of product. And all of that's going to be shipped free. Um, you either pay $99 plus tax or you pay $129 and you also get a mini stamp and cut and emboss machine in either white or boho blue. So by the time you um, do the math, you're getting all of that product for nearly half price, okay? If you have questions, please talk with me. Please ask. Um, I've been communicating back and forth today with a customer who um, is planning to join and had some questions and I'm happy to answer those questions and then make you uh, let you make the final decision as to what's best for you. But the starter kit deal, you can't beat it. You just can't beat it, okay? And I always love to grow my team. So please think about that. Okay, today I'm going to show you a new stamping technique that uses bleach, just household bleach, just a small amount of it. And I think you're really going to like this. And I think you're going to be surprised at just how easy this um, technique is to do. We're also going to do some heat embossing. So um, if you haven't seen that in a while, I think you'll be happy to see that incorporated into today's card also. I'm going to flip my camera around now, and while I do that, please share this live video and invite others to join in today's fun. Okay, friends. All right, so here is the inspiration for today's um, project and technique. So this is a card I made a long time ago. By the way, I often will go to my card stash and look for inspiration that way. So if you're ever feeling like you need some inspiration and you just don't know where to go, Pull some cards from your old stash to get technique ideas, to get layout ideas, color combinations. Um, and then it's kind of, for me, it's kind of nostalgic that I can go back and, and think, oh yeah, I remember the stamp or whatever. Um, and a lot of times I'm seeing things that I probably have forgotten over time. But this was made by embossing with silver embossing powder. This is a stamp we had as a celebration freebie many years ago. Um, and I used this bleaching technique on that, on this card, which I'm now going to show you. We're going to be using the Petal Park bundle. And this is a photopolymer stamp set, meaning we can see all the way through 
the stamp. So um, I am using my stamp and pierce mat to get that extra little bit of cushion. And it just gives us a much better impression. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and I've got my, um, okay, I'm losing, um, just lost the words, my embossing kit. Okay, <laughs> my embossing kit. I'm using the embossing buddy to go over that cardstock real well. What this does is eliminate some of the static that's on the cardstock and it makes sure that our embossing powder is only picked up by the Versamark ink that we stamp and that we don't get stray embossing powder in other places where we don't want it. So I'm going to, I have to turn it this way just to make it easier for myself to see which direction I'm going. So I'm using Versamark ink. This is what we use to do our stamping when we are heat embossing. Oh, I didn't have enough ink on there. I'm gonna have to try again. Let me flip this over. I thought I had it inked really well. Let me do it this way. And there was not enough ink in the middle. Can you see that? It's a clear ink, but it's very sticky and tacky. Do you see how I missed the ink in the middle? I'm just gonna re-ink and make sure I do a better job inking that up. Notice there are spaces where the flowers will go. And I've already have my gold embossing powder in this container, so I'm not going to switch it from here to um, this other container. I use that for other colors that I don't have. don't have a container for. Be sure before you put the powder away, and remember you'll always want to put it this away, out of the way, um, cover it up before you start, before you turn on your heat tool. But I like to make sure I'm looking at every part of the stamped image and that I have plenty of embossing powder on there. And notice there is, are not any stray bits of embossing powder around. That's because I used that um, embossing buddy. So let me push that out of the way for now and bring in my heat tool. Just kind of hold it in place, moving it just slightly until I start to see the powder melt. It's always like magic to me. I always love this part. There we go, there's the magic. So that as that powder, embossing powder is now melting, it gets shiny. And it keeps the detail of the stamped image. I love it. Okay, and before putting my heat tool aside, I just take another look. If I see an area that maybe is um, not shiny or glossy looking, that means I need to go back over that with the heat. Okay, the heat didn't melt some part of it, if that's what you see, okay? So it looks really good, it's all shiny, all glossy, and I'm good to go. Now I'm going to stamp, I'm going to do the same thing with the flowers. And before I do this, I have to look at my punch to make sure I'm stamping 
in the correct position to get my punch in there easily. Because when I was making my sample, I forgot to pay attention to that. So I just had to cut the cardstock a bit. Ooh, does anybody re I always forget this when I'm doing it live. Does anybody uh, know what step I just skipped? With this rich razzleberry, does anybody know? I skipped a step here that I wish I hadn't, but hopefully everything will turn out fine. I forgot to use the embossing buddy on my cardstock. So if I see any stray bits of embossing powder, I just wanna brush those off. That looks pretty good, but I know something's gonna show up. But that's okay, we're punching this, so I don't think it'll matter too much. Get that embossing powder out of the way. Yes, I forgot the embossing buddy. Aw, there's my favorite son-in-law, Jonathan Schmidt. I love it when he pops on. I think the GM means grandma, which I'm super excited about, all you know, I keep talking about. They're having a girl. And right now, waiting for that new buddy, um, <laughs> new buddy, new baby, um, July seems like a long time away, but I know it'll be here before we know it. Um, gosh, I, I can't remember the last time I was this excited about anything. I suppose last year with Emily's graduation from uh, PT school and John and Andrea getting married. But to have such so many exciting things happen in just two years' time, Actually, just about a year and a, it'll be a, just about a year and a half time. Okay, so now I've embossed those flowers and punched them out. And here comes the bleach part. I just have some household bleach, just a little bit in this jar. Make sure you have paper towels around. Uh, washcloth, roll your sleeves up. Okay. Oh, Sandy, the baby's due on your birthday. Oh, that's fun. Now I'm going to use one of my water painters and because there's so much detail in these stamped images, I'm using the one with the smallest tip. Now, ordinarily I would have it filled with water to do some watercolor effects but today it's empty and I'm not even putting the bleach in it. I'm just going to pick up some bleach from the jar. I'm gonna go over these big leaves. And on these bigger leaves, more open leaves, I'm gonna put a little more bleach than on some of the other leaves I'm going to color or paint with the bleach. And you do want to be patient with this technique. It takes some drying time. So that looks pretty good. I have all of my larger open leaves painted with the bleach. You can see some of them are already starting to bleach out the color. And now I'm going to do these ones where we see lots of veins in the leaves. And notice this time, I'm not dipping my aqua painter in the bleach each time. I'm just using what's on the brush and taking that as far as I can on all of them. And I think that looks pretty good. And I think what will happen is we'll get different shades of the bleaching. All right, now 
I guess I should have waited to do this on the flowers. But now I'm just going to put, let me do this. I'm just going to do a little bit of bleach on the outer sections of this flower. I'm going to do the same thing on the medium flower. You don't have to worry about um, painting perfectly. It turns out... Hmm, Joyce, I don't know. I'm not sure about the thicker bleach. I've never... Um, I guess I always buy this one. So I don't have that one to try. If you try it with the thicker bleach, the no splash bleach, um, let me know how it turns out. I'd be interested in hearing that. I'm also gonna put some bleach right here in the center of this medium one. Okay, so now you can see that the colors the flowers and the leaves where I put the bleach, the color is starting to bleach out. And depending on how much bleach was used, um, Sandy, we'll, we'll have to talk about that in the Mary Stampers group, in the team group, okay? Um, since that's on a, a different page just for our team. But there will be something coming soon. Um, you can speed up the process of the bleach drying by applying heat to it with our same heat tool, okay? So I'd say these look pretty good. So I'm gonna start putting my card together. And then I wanna show you what some of the other colors look like when they are bleached. When you're doing this for the first time or if you haven't done it in a very long time, I would suggest getting out um, several colors of cardstock scraps and just, just painting a little bit of bleach on each color so that you really know how that color is going to turn out. Um, I did practice with a few of the greens and I ended up choosing the old olive, classic old olive, right? Um, and I knew that based on that sample I showed you at the beginning of the live, I knew that I would get a pretty pink color on the rich razzleberry. But I will show you some of the others I tried. You know, it's kind of crazy to think, but I think I really, I don't use bleach very much. The last time I used bleach was when I brought a sand dollar back from vacation and I wanted to um, make it real crisp white. So I soaked it in bleach and then um, really down, down here in the craft room, I use my bleach for crafting more than I do laundry. All right, so that's that. I am going to put this on an old olive card base that I've already cut and folded. Oh, Margaret, you're working on one of the, my card kits. Oh, how awesome. I hope you're enjoying it. I've gotten some really great feedback from my class to go customers. Um, and I really appreciate hearing that. It's nice to see others enjoying um, the work I put together. Great, Margaret, I'm so glad. Okay, hi, Alice from New Zealand. 
So here's the basic card. Now you can fancy this up. You can add more layers. You can put a sentiment. Um, you could even do a layer of embossed cardstock. But I think it's just really simple and elegant. And think of all the different colors you can do this with. The sky's the limit, right? Let me show you, and I will give this card away, friends, so hang on. Um, let me show you some of the other colors I did. And this, truly, this is exactly what I did. I reached to my left where all my cardstock is, and I literally took my um, aqua painter. I'm going to move that so I don't mess, put this up here so I don't get bleach on it by accident. And I just did a couple strokes of bleach. Okay, that's all I did. And you can do as many colors as you want. Um, some of them were very surprising. Some of them were surprising. Obviously black has tons of pigment in it, but look at the nice brown. It's sort of like, I would say, like a light shade of our um, soft suede. So there was that. This is Blackberry Bliss. This surprised me a lot, how yellow it went. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Um, pumpkin Pie also went a very similar yellow. So isn't that surprising? And then I first tried this white, or this pink, which is Melon Mambo. And it I got this very, very light shade of I'll say a baby pink. Um, it reminds me of pink pirouette that we used to have. Um, but just a really light, light shade of baby pink. So I thought, I wonder what it'll look like if I use the bleach on polished pink. Look how white that is. Almost truly white, isn't it? Now, and I did put a lot of bleach on these when I first did it. So I'm just going to add a little bit and see what it does. But that goes very, very white. And then look here at the, what is this, gorgeous grape. And it's more of a blue. So as I said, when you try this technique on your own, let me push these out of the way, get out your water painters, empty them out, um, and I don't like to put bleach in my water painters. I just don't. Um, I prefer it to do it this method where I have my bleach in a container. Um, and then I just keep that in there. A tiny bit of bleach is going to like last forever in my craft room, it seems like. Uh, very long time. But be sure to wash out your um, aqua painters very, very well after you do the bleach technique. Okay, anything you use that came near the bleach, make sure you wash it out well after you complete your complete the technique and complete your card. All right, so here is our card. What do you think of this technique? Is it something you would try? Margaret says she hasn't tried it, but she likes it. That makes me think Margaret's going to be giving this technique a try. Notice, too, where I went heavier on the bleach with these open leaves, it did, those got a little bit more yellow than some where I went lighter with the bleach. Okay. Cheryl, yeah, or Sherry, right? Cheryl Lane. Um, yes. Do the trials, do the trials. Um, it, because again, some of these colors will surprise you in a good way and some you might decide it's not really for you. Um, so yes, and it works, the technique works so well with the heat embossing. So if you haven't done heat embossing for a while, um, pull out that heat tool and your embossing powders and give it a shot. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Okay, Jill, you did it with colored images. Interesting. Yes, Joyce Wilhelm, please send me a picture when you try the bleach technique with the thick no splash bleach that you have. All right. Oh, Sandra, you're an accident waiting to happen. I bet you could do that. Get somebody else to pour you. Just, you only need, you know, gosh, this is even way more than I need. You only need a tiny, tiny bit. And wear only white. Do not wear your best clothes. Do not come home from work in a business suit and sit down to um, do this technique. Don't do this technique with your little granddaughter in her party dress. As always, you just want to be safe and careful. Oh, there's a thought doing some outlining with that. Alice, I don't know about brushing it onto a stamp. Should we give it a try? I'd say we give it a try. Um, Let's see here. I've got a small, I've got a small thank you stamp. This might be left out from a project I was doing last week. I think I put the stamp set away and missed. Let me grab my scrap paper first. So Alice is saying just brush some bleach onto the stamp. It's very liquidy obviously a very thin liquid so I'm not sure how the stamp would hold the bleach but let's give it a try and uh, it doesn't really well you can barely see it let's try that let's try this it kind of works though who said that Pam oh put some on the paper towel oh brilliant let me see what can I here I'll just do this. I need, what can I, okay, I'll just use this. Might bleach the lid of my container, but that's okay. So, um, Pam Simmons says, kind of soak the paper towel with bleach. So in other words, we're making an ink pad of bleach. These paper towels are super absorbent and I don't really want to pour too much bleach. Okay, so now I've got this and I'll just do it on top of here. I'm gonna ink this up with my bleach ink pad and stamp right onto my Rich Rousselberry cardstock. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Yes, definitely be sure to wash your um, stamps very well after doing this, your aqua painters, your stamps, your surfaces, anything at all. Um, somebody mentioned, and I do wanna pull out some paper for this. Somebody mentioned, what about flicking some bleach? This, is, this could get, this could be an accident in the craft room. But yes, you could flick some bleach onto I'm closing this up onto your cardstock. But again, I'd be very careful of that. Um, if you wanted to do that, flicking the bleach onto your cardstock, drop your um, cardstock into a box. I always have Stampin' Up! boxes here from deliveries. Any kind of cardboard box with sides high enough that when you flick, you're not going to have bleach and stuff going everywhere. Okay. But I do, let's, let's speed this up so I can see what this flicking of the bleach looks like. Oh, 
Well, there you go. It's definitely very effective. Definitely very effective. Look at that splatter. Whose idea was that? Oh, I love it. Okay. And again, I would just simply wash your stamps very well with um, soap and water. And I think they would be fine as long as you're not letting the, uh, them sit with that bleach on them. Okay. So I'm going to say goodbye. Um, and before I do, I would like you to comment Petal Park for the bundle that we used today. And I'm not going to set this down in case there's bleach spots. If you would like to have the opportunity to win this card, simply type in the comments now, Petal Park. That's the bundle we used, and I will get this card out to one lucky winner. I thank you all for joining me on this uh, Monday, February 6th afternoon. It's always fun to get on here and share, and I learned some new things as well and gave some... Um, Ideas a good try. Yes, Mary Ellen, be careful what you're wearing. In fact, I thought this is one of my favorite long sleeve t shirts. I have one to be extra careful, but I hadn't thought about the splattering. But honestly, and anytime you splatter, really, if you're doing something like that that you think can get really messy, what and I've done it before is I just drop it into a cardboard box and I have it sitting on the bottom and therefore when you know you're flicking ink or um, bleach as in this case it's not flying everywhere it will be contained to that box all right everybody have a great week i look forward to being back with you on wednesday at 8 p.m i'll see you soon bye bye